myself. I've been playing games since the uh, 1980s and I've been into FPS games mostly, so competitive games or just usual FPS games like Call of Duty and other channels. I didn't do any uh, development or game design before building the Double Games. But I always had uh, some kind of idea of how people come up with game ideas. So it wasn't hard for me to adapt to the situation. So we just uh, entered a game jam in uh, July, I believe. Uh, and then we decided to move on with a form of uh, approach to game industry. So we established it in 2020, like I said. Our mission is clear, getting at it at the beginning. Uh, we've been developing games for over a year, so we've probably tried more than 55 or 60 prototypes. The reason, or not the reason, but the hard part is the competition in high education at the moment. Because whenever you think about some idea, someone else is already working on it. And you will see in the next slide probably uh, uh, other slide, the publication. We always uh, focus on trends, hypes, like TikTok videos, Instagram videos. Because the hyper casual, as you know, as, you, as all of you know probably, hyper casual lifespan is short, but hype is um, huge. So you can just touch a foot and beat out this uh, in a minute, I believe. Uh, it's hard to make a hit because of the competition. And I believe hyper casual, uh, most of people currently uh, talk about. Oh, it's, it's hyper casual again. Oh, this is garbage, etc., etc. So, when we think about it, you are trying to teach non gamers how to play games. And I believe uh, this will be very helpful for the future in the gaming industry. For example, in my opinion, the uh, industry will evolve. Uh, revolutionize itself to the hybrid casual in one or two years, I believe. So let's get over with the trend and hype oriented part. I'll show an example of competition. For example, the mid credit challenge. Uh, when I saw the video for a thousand times on TikTok and Instagram, I thought of it. I thought of making the, this game, making this uh, exact same game. And when I look at the charts, after three days, there are three of them in the top charts. And it's, it will be always like that probably. And because there is no IP or um, deep characteristic uh, features, you cannot really uh, tell that this is your idea, this is your own idea, because someone is already working on it. For example, um, these all four uh, is, are same uh, in my opinion, but there are few ones in this chart at the moment that add some value to Like for example, change the mechanics, change the cranes. Uh, movements. For example, you just move your feet on the crates and reach the other side. In these ones. But the others try to, um, for example, making crates move, making crates jiggle along the way. So maybe that will be for that will be better for um, ideation part. For example. If you want to just try a trend, you, you, you might want to try this trend and, and a version, a B version of added value version. Good. 
Yes, it's hard for me to identify now because there are too many contributions. There are too many studios, there are too many players, there are too many publishers. There are too many everything, but uh, we will always keep us motivated. Like yeah. what we will uh, make it in the uh, For example, the featured audiences part. This is a graphic taken by uh, taken from Mensch of Youth. Okay. 2.5 billion total users analyzed. Uh, the exciting part is 120 million uh, players are playing both high casual and normal games. Casual, in a purchase purchasable games. But 100 million is all new to the game. For example, there are no uh, playing activities, gaming activities before this part. So these are becoming players now. Uh, yeah, okay. They, they can be old, they can be, I don't know, not interested, you know, but uh, you never know what you can bring uh, into the industry. So I always think like when I see an argument about casual versus hyper casual, I always think like we are always um, bringing something to the table and we are helping each other to make people play more games. Okay, sometimes we fail, but uh, we will always try harder and harder. Um, Okay, this was a short presentation, but uh, we can talk about um, more if you want to, for example, ask questions, ask questions about um, building the studio or coming up with ideas, anything. Any questions for I? I actually would like to ask a question since Hyper Games team uh, collected some questions before the event and I think uh, you might have some ideas on it. So, for the future, do you see any possibility to create multiplayer hyper casual games of to connect people? Yeah, of course, because uh, our big publishers are only trying to fake it at the moment, like fake scoreboards, fake AI, fake players, etc. Uh, if we can make a structure that is easy to integrate and maintain and cheap, of course, because you will reach a lot of people in the, in the same time, so you will be facing a lot of uh, issues in the multiplayer part. But I believe, yeah, I think we can do that. Got it. Have you seen a you know, big trend before in hypercational market in terms of you know, multiplayer games? Did you see that you know, it's going to be a hit? in the future or not? I mean, um, in high trends, I saw that some ideas uh, evolved into PC games. For example, I can't remember the same name, but Plum Park, Plumber Park, I don't know. For example, these kind of games are little hyper-casual games bringing in together, and you make a whole game. And if you, get, if you make it um, multiplayer, it becomes, it becomes a PC game altogether. Easiest way of doing it. Got it. And another question, I think you also are knowledgeable about the publishing part as well. So, what is the most important thing for developers when deciding a publisher to publish their games? Um, the most important thing is to read the contract truly. Uh, because when you are starting, uh, it's all exciting, it's all, oh yeah, they are, they are interested in us, we will make money, we will make games, we will uh, create a business. But if you don't uh, be conscious about the parts that, like, for example, when can you cancel the contract? How can you cancel it? Do you have the right to cancel it? For example, these are basic uh, examples. Uh, other than that, maybe <coughs> you have to ask about publisher's agenda as well. For example, if the publisher wants to maintain few games in top charts and doesn't care about the revenue that 
profit share to the developer, it won't be good for you. Maybe you can choose the other one that who wants to squeeze the game and take most of our, most of it and share it with you in revenue wise. Maybe you can ask that, um, but these information might not be available all the time, so you might want to check it yourself as well. For example, some of some of the publishers are um, publicly uh, shared, some of them are acquired, some of them are still private, etc. Maybe you can just investigate, research, and come up with your own own ideas. For example, if this company uh, acquired this company, what what the first company gets out of the second company? Why is why are them why are they acquired? Them? Is it is it because of leads or maybe cross promotion? Maybe making their portfolio bigger, for example. I don't know. But my biggest advice would be uh, going for boutique kind of uh, publishers, like not publishers that doesn't have hundreds and hundreds of hundreds of studios. So it's um, more about you. It will be more about you. It will be more detailed um, feedbacks, more detailed what do you do wrong, what do you do right, etc. And you will probably develop yourself along the way. Got it. To follow up on that actually, do you think it is healthy to publish your game with a publisher just because you know they're too popular or they maybe have you know such bigger teams or you know would you prefer to you know publish your game with a company that is you know publishing similar games to your uh, you know mechanics as I mean yeah in the beginning yeah like I said in the beginning it's it's like oh they are big they are a huge company they are interested in us it's exciting but when you think about it, it's really not, it's, um, it's numbers game. There will be, for example, 50 of you, like, like you, 50 of them. And it will be more competitive inside. Got it. Any questions else? Okay. Hello. Thank you for the presentation. I have one question. Uh, right now, uh, you, you will accept to work with a publisher only if they pay for the prototype. You know, if they pay you an exclusive CD, etc. Or you can accept to work like for free. Can I get it again? You will you will work with the publisher right now only if they pay for a prototype, okay. or you accept to work for free. Let's say, only if you think that you know, uh, the publisher can help you, etc. To I believe the question is if you if you pay greater than others, will you accept it? Uh, it depends on your finances. Like, what? How many people uh, is your team? Are you team? Like, if you are seven people and rely on prototype revenue, like prototype payments, you probably have to take it. But in the meantime, you still can develop yourself. Like, you still can learn. Stuff. How do others publish? How do how does the self-publishing work, for example? Uh, in the meantime, I believe there are, there will be more uh, self-publishing uh, initiatives that will be executed in the near future. Partnerships uh, that allows you to self-publish with the use of publisher tools. Then the, there will be no maybe there will be no prototype payment per prototype, but there will be more um, deep knowledge, like you will, you will get know-how about monetization, user acquisition. Uh, in the beginning, you don't really care about this. You rely on publishers' feedbacks, but you have to learn it because uh, if you don't know what are you selling, how are you selling, uh, your product actually doesn't matter. And uh, other questions? Um, for, for you, not for the company, but for all the studio, you, you think that after one hit or two hit, you need to start doing self publishing, or you think you can like stay like with one, two, three, four, five hits and still do you know a publishing by a publisher? It's not necessarily the thing to do. Like 
what do you expect from yourself? Like, um, do you want to build a marketing team as well? Will you, will you be able to maintain and manage that as well? You will be playing with finances. And the uh, finance part is harder than making the game. It's like, it's very hard. And maybe, for example, some of the guys, uh, some of the people, see hyper casual as a step towards the casual or other game genres. And I believe that's logical, but um, if you want to do that, just like I want to make a hit game, I want to make two hit games, for example, I will be have the finances and I will be able to move forward to the other games. If you want to do that, maybe marketing would be um, de debatable for you. Like, how uh, will you be able to use this know-how in casual games? Because um, hyper casual marketing is different than casual games or PC games. Anyways, so you have to think about those things. If you want to uh, go all in, you can go all in after you making it because you will have the money for it. Okay, thank you. All right, any other questions? All right then, thank you all. A big round of applause, please.